Okay, so chapter 11 is on chi-square. Now I'm going to do problem number one twice because it's different whether you have the new calculator or the old calculator. Um, and you'll know very quickly whether or not you have the new calculator because when you go to stat tests, if you scroll down and you see chi-square goodness of fit test, you have the new calculator and it's very easy to do. If you don't have it, there's a lot of work in progress and I'll show you how to do those in a separate video. So um, if you have the older calculator, uh, you can stop now and go to the other one and it, you'll see it. It's called uh, uh, chapter one, uh, chapter 11, problem one, old calculator. So, um, and this one will be labeled uh, obviously GOF test. So um, if you have the old calculator, go to that other video now. Okay, so for chap for problem one, we're doing a goodness of fit test, which means that we're looking to see is the, um, are the uh, proportions correct? Okay, does the data fit the expected value? Does our observed information fit our expected values? And so what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to go to edit, and we're going to have to put our information in. So let me clear this out. My cat keeps getting on stuff. Okay, so we're going to clear this out. And I'm going to put in, uh, these are our percentages. Okay, so this is, remember, move the decimal point two places to the left. So, you know, 31.3 divided by 100, 56.1 divided by 100, 2.5 divided by 100, 10.1 divided by 100. Okay, so those are the values that we're gonna need. We're gonna need the 0 0.313, 0 0.561, 0 0.025, and 0 0.101. Now what we have to do is we have to take this percentage and multiply it by how many people were actually um, uh, surveyed. Okay, in this case, we surveyed 400 people. All right, the question's a little weird, so I'm not even gonna bother asking 15 and older, never married, married, widowed, and separated. I hate to know, hate to know that 15-year-old widow, because you know, that's just sad. Um, so we take our percentages and we have to multiply those by how many people were surveyed. So I'm gonna say that L2 is equal to L1, so second L1 times 400. And this is our expected values, all right? And in the next one, we're gonna put our observed values, 140, 236, three and 21. Okay, so this only works if our expected values are gonna be higher than five. <laughs> so because our expected values are higher than five, we can do the chi-square test because this one is what, 10. This here shows us, calculates where our expected values were. So that's A. Now part, actually not, that's not even A, it's not part zero, I guess. Um, in part A, they wanna know what is the null hypothesis. The null and alternative hypothesis will always be the same, okay? Uh, the null hypothesis is that the data fits the distribution, whatever the distribution might be, and the alternative is that it doesn't, okay? The distribution is incorrect. In part C, what are the degrees of freedom? Well, it's just n minus one. How many things there are minus one? Just like we've been doing with degrees of freedom for everything else. Part D, state the distribution. Well, it's a chi-square test with three degrees of freedom. So, pretty simple. Part E, what is the test statistic? Okay, so now this is where, um, really where the two, 
things differ. So on the new calculators, once we put our data in, we have our expected and our observed. We're going to go to stat and test, and we're going to go down, all the way down to chi-square goodness of fit test, which is D. It asks, where is our observed? Well, our observed were in L3. Our expected were in L2. Our degrees of freedom are 3. And we calculate. And it gives us our chi-square value, the 16.565. What is the p-value? Well, notice this says 8.6. Well, I have to move the decimal point four places because I can't have a p. The p-value has to be between 0 and 1. So I look here. This is negative 4, so I'm going to move it four decimal places. 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm going to have 0 0.00086. So I have to round to 9. What does it mean? That's the probability of getting um, the test statistic if the null hypothesis was true. So that's what it has always meant. Part G, sketch the graph. Well, if we want, we can um, sketch the graph, but we don't really have to because the uh, chi-square test is a skewed graph, okay, and it's always going to be on this side. So it's always greater than. So this is what your graph will always look like. It doesn't matter. There, there's no, we're not dealing with less than's, we're not we're dealing with betweens, we're not dealing with not equal to's. It's always, is it greater than that value? So it's always going to be a greater than, so it's always going to be that one. And H, What is our alpha? Well, I don't know if you know if it said it. Um, yes, five percent level. Okay, but even if it doesn't say it, it's almost always five percent. What are we going to do? Well, our p-value is 0 0.0009. That's less than 0 0.05. So we're going to reject the null hypothesis because here alpha is greater than p. And what does that mean? Well, that means there is evidence to conclude that this distribution here is incorrect. That's all. That's what we've done. Okay, so this is a very simple test to do with the new calculator. All right. So that was problem one.